well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a very early morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. I do want to wish you well on this uh, start of the weekend, whether you're waking up for a nice early morning cup of coffee or two, or maybe even three, or coming back from a late night over there in the Western Hemisphere. I uh, do want to wish you well and a nice relaxing start and perhaps even profitable start to your weekend. That's actually a few targets been hit, so very nice to come back and see that. Although, I do want to address this. I have been certainly away from my computer a lot more than I typically am over the past day, just dealing with uh, managerial type stuff. Uh, there's been a little bit of a mix up with my residence permits and whatnot, so I had to come back to Finland and deal with that, but uh, but all is well and good. And more importantly, I want to address all the people um, who, who have been trying to reach out to me. I believe I've gotten back to everyone by now. I do apologize for the delay, um, but of course, uh, I, you know, I, I, I believe I have gotten back to everyone now. Um, and of course, for all the people who feel like they missed out on the discount, I do apologize about that. Again, I, I suppose because yesterday I was away for typically typically, you know, usually more than I would be, and, and it probably will be the case for today and tomorrow as well. Uh, I'll open up that discount for the rest of the weekend. Um, no problem with that. I don't think it hurts anyone. And of course, you know, it's more important that if you're asking a question, you get your question answered first to make sure that's a good fit before actually going in. So I do, so so I completely understand that and in uh, any frustrations, no problem with that. Anyways, more importantly, let's get into the magic unit money business going on deep and downy dirty right into right over here and initiate that good old teleportation and before I get into it, I just realized I forgot to tell what the what the discount code is. Same one. Uh, let me just bring it up for one second right over here. And of course, I should also just directly answer some of those questions, the recurring questions that I typically get. There are three different programs. Two of them are extremely long form, 35 hour long plus programs. The first one is the technical analysis program, which is an all encompassing program. Um, that's typically the first link in the description of these videos. It goes over not just technical analysis, but uh, but but profit taking, pr position ma position management, risk management, understanding un underlying mark dynamics, and well, and, and some and some bonus indicators in there as well. Some of my proprietary indicators. Um, that's going to be the one that's probably most applicable to most people. If you are even you know in this sort of thing for that reason. Um, of course, with all my programs, I mean, these are 35 hour plus long programs. So realistically, most people do not need to take these. Uh, most people are going to be completely fine with my free content. I even I even have a very uh, dedicated playlist towards beginners titled uh, Tentacle Analysis 101. Most people just view that and uh, and that'll and that'll take you pretty much where you want to be. There's there, there's there, uh, there's definitely some good stuff in there. And I did actually just get done updating it, so it's significantly longer as well, and uh, and much more thorough. But if that you know if if that doesn't do it for you, and perhaps you're a little bit more serious, you want to do this as more of like a lifestyle, uh, you know, typically in the hopes of doing this as a profession, then yes, then then these programs are some that you know you. That that would be probably more applicable to you. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big time investment as well, not just not just monetary and all that stuff. And you're you know likely going to review these these programs over time. You know over as as the years come and go, and your and your understanding deepens. Anyways, the options program is like that, but with regards to the derivative products options. Um, don't start out there. That one that one is <laughs> that one is quite difficult. I would not start out there. And then the jewel indicators are quite literally just access to the jewel indicators. Um, all, the, all the relevant links are in the description below. All right, let's get into fun stuff now. Jesus Christ, man, just sound like a goddamn show for myself. Apologies about that. It is embarrassing and it and always does feel weird, but do you want to make it clear and um, perhaps answer a few questions along the way? Anyways, I want to start out here with a Litecoin, as you see, a little bit of a different day. Uh, Litecoin, I, th I believe, is leading the market right now. Very, very good, very constructive. And this is why I have that rule. I'm never short on anything that has the golden cross going on and we're above the yellow 20 minutes bench moon average the golden cross happening all the way over here on the green and purple the 50 and the 200 cross on the upside and uh, and since then we really haven't even broken below the yellow 21 and really just a beautiful opportunity to be a buyer down here at the $100 level uh, just a few days ago uh, yesterday obviously we saw the close and this is also what I want to speak to uh, as well a lot of times you'll see a first mover in this market and you know it's typically one of like the top 10 coins right we have we have Bitcoin obviously typically taking the reins but then and there's Litecoin sometimes takes the reins, and then we see uh, Mr. Buterall, then we see uh, Tron at some, actually we've actually seen Tron at some points um, for, all the, for all the shit that people give it. Uh, EOS has been one, Bcash has been one as well, um, and they all seem to take turns. So right now, Litecoin doing something like that, some some like this, we looked at this yesterday, and this was, this was what gave me that conviction that we were gonna see that up move, of which the target, I believe, has been hit on Bitcoin. Uh, we were looking for an 8150 target. Let's see how high we got. 8130, yeah, close enough, man. Um, and 
I, and I'm not necessarily intent to say that this is over just yet. Uh, again, going back to Mrs. Litecoin, we spoke about Mrs. Litecoin uh, likely to get back to prior highs. We got, did we get to prior highs? We got to 121 uh, spot 57, prior highs 122 even. Yeah, I'd say that's good enough. And Litecoin to me looks like she wants to uh, rally up here. So is Litecoin going to take the reins, put the market in her backpack, and carry it back up? I, I believe so, actually. Uh, looking at Mrs. Litecoin, I, I would, there's, we were bullish on it yesterday, and I, or sorry, we were bullish on it two days ago, and I'd be bullish on it yesterday and today. And uh, and look at this, we do see price action floating up, but during this whole time, those stokes have been down, and they actually just freshly crossed the upside uh, as of yesterday night's uh, closure. So again, if Mrs. Litecoin came back down to uh, to 111, uh, that'd be a nice little opportunity, in my opinion. And uh, more importantly, I do, I would be looking for a continuation overall. I'm not saying that she's gonna come back down to 111. Uh, in fact, I would say that it's probably more likely that we see continuation first and foremost here. Um, this is this is looking pretty damn good. Uh, let's go over here to the 12 hour. How did the 12 hour close? Yeah, pretty damn good. Again, if you wanna make pivots off the lower time frames, you certainly could. Uh, I would say though, we largely tested it already. It'd be this 115-ish region right here. Let me see, do I already have it uh, marked out? Yep, I do. And uh, yeah, you know, I could actually lower this just a bit, uh, be a little bit more conservative with it. Um, and if we do see a four hour total close below 115, then yes, you know, you, you might be looking for a pullback down to the 111 region, but uh, I'm not looking at it that way. I believe that we've already seen that, and this one's trying to grind its way higher. Uh, usually when you see consolidation at a resistance like this, that's a good sign. Um, so overall, I did want to bring up Mrs. Litecoin with that regard. Uh, not only that, but all higher time frames look good to me. You know, lower time frames might have a pullback here and there. Uh, certainly possible, but two-day having a very good close. Uh, two-day Stokes are, you know, snaking around and looking like they, uh, whoa, hey, Jesus, man, that was loud as fuck. What's up, Michelle? Good to meet you, Michelle. Welcome to the cave. Must be a very open-minded uh, young lady. Uh, <laughs> but, or, you know, if she's a Jenna pronoun, don't want to assume anything here. Um, but yeah, hey, hey, there we go. Uh, again, welcome. Of which we actually do have, we actually do have quite a few girls here, which is, you know, I don't want to say it's surprising, but holy shit, man, some of the, some like super cool girls have actually met through this. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, just like super, you know, just pe people that you want to hang out with, right? Anyways, uh, going over here to the two day, yeah, we, uh, you know, overall structure looks fine. Three day, again, good. Just came back down to the, to the white trend and simple. And we've been speaking about this for a while on Bitcoin. I typically don't go through the rigmarole on the altcoins, but, uh, but Litecoin worth it today. And, uh, and just having a, having a beautiful retest of this white trend and simple. And I do believe that we're going to rally off this. And this is your big base, you know, going on and forwards from here, golden cross in the three day as of uh, about a month ago. And so uh, it's getting respected. We're above all major moving averages. That's good. That's really, really good. It's real good. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and we see something similar on Bitcoin, right? So going back on over here to Mr. Bitcoin, just for a second to kind of compare them, we see the white two hundred symbol coming all the way back on over here. Now, because Litecoin doesn't have the same sort of price action history, uh, we'll do we'll do a little bit of a case study on Bitcoin for a second here. But uh, the white two hundred symbol has been a damn good indication of where we are within the overall market phase. You see over here in 2014, losing it, bad, regaining it right over here, good. By the way, right after we regained it, we actually retested it just not so not so long afterwards. Kind of what you just saw with Mrs. Litecoin. And then for the next three or so years, not even anywhere near the white 200 simple, uh, just accelerating the upside like crazy. So again, going back to Mrs. Litecoin for a second, uh, Mrs. Litecoin looks good. Mrs. Litecoin is bullish, and uh, you know, ups, you know, upwards targets are still going to be. I, I think 120, 125 is still an area of interest. But uh, if we break higher here, I don't believe that it's going to stop there. Uh, shorter term, or sorry, longer term, uh, maybe shorter term. Yeah, you know, a little bit of a counter counter trend play at 125. Uh, but I do believe that um, 135, and, or sorry, not even 135, but 145 is the next big area of, uh, of interest. And we're just going straight off of um, structure right here, just swing highs and swing lows. Nothing too crazy. Anyone can do this. Yeah, I have it at 145 marked out right there. I'm sure that the volume profile might show some activity. Yeah, a little bit, little bit of activity, kind of like the last of the high value um, uh, high, higher value nodes within this region. So again, uh, Litecoin's looking damn good. And the key was yesterday, and that's what gave us the conviction that we were gonna see most of this market just float up. Um, even while things were looking a little bit, you know, a little bit, a little bit questionable, Litecoin led the way. Oh, and I should be fully transparent with my positions. I'm still holding the same positions, essentially. Uh, this 8,500 uh, strike short on these, on, on, you know, on these calls, which again, price action has actually been moving up against me. And you would typically, and this is this is a good case study just for people interested in options. Um, 
you know, I sold these when Bitcoin was maybe like around 7,800 maybe or, or 7,900, something like that. Uh, price actually moved against me all yesterday, but look at this. I'm actually making money on this position. Why? Time decay. And, uh, and again, just a, a very, you know, deductive way of trading. Uh, as far as my spot positions, I am still pretty much flat. I don't, I don't have any intent to trade this right now. Like I said, I'm very busy with like, you know, real life stuff. Not that this is not real life, but stuff that, you know, when it comes down to my trading, it goes in order of priority, you know, life, then main account, then sometimes it's main account, life, then streamer account. But usually I want it to be a life, main account, then streamer account. Um, and, uh, and right now, uh, stream account is just not just not my priority. So so I've basically been flat on these positions, still holding thirty nine thirty and fifty one fifty. Um, but basically but basically flat on those, taking profits at uh, seventy eight hundred on those June futures. So again, I don't really have any intent to trade this. Although uh, you know, of course, as we spoke about yesterday, the second that Bitcoin got above seventy uh, seventy nine thirty, it was we were looking for a move to about eighty one fifty. So a nice little you know a little uh, about two hundred buck move, uh, not bad, especially not bad um, when you consider that's like what two percent maybe. Some like some like that. It's decent. It's 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 actually quite decent. So you can certainly make uh, you can certainly make some money doing that. Um, anyways, I would stick with the same overall outlook regardless of what Mrs. Litecoin is doing. I would say that that certainly increases the chances of upside here. But the way that I'd be trading this is the same. If I did take this long over here, which again I did not, uh, but I know several people did. So hey, congratulations. Good good trading on you. Um, you know, taking profits at the next resistance in this blue box territory, as we spoke about, was you know, I you know, I, in my opinion, good trading. Uh, I would flip along. I, I would flip long once again if we do see a Bitcoin take out eighty two fifty to the upside. I would say that that would uh, likely lead us up for a nice move to about eighty six hundred, and probably at that point, you know, we're gonna pull a Litecoin and in, in, in realistic, realistically see it at, at prior highs, the prior resistance right around eighty eight fifty. So again, another you know, another uh, two hundred to four hundred dollar trade. Uh, on the table, which I, you know, looking at Litecoin, it is hard not. It, it's it's kind of hard to imagine that Bitcoin actually kind of loses its luster right here. So, am I going to be taking back what I said about Bitcoin the other day, that I believe we have the local top in? Well, we could still trade all the way back up to eighty eight hundred and still have a local top, and it's not until we actually break out eighty eight fifty where where you know structurally speaking we're, we're, we're gonna likely be looking at new highs um, so I would still I, I, I would still I err on the side of caution here uh, while things do look good this is a weekend and while well to be fair we've actually had a lot of a lot of moves on weekends so maybe I maybe I shouldn't finish that sentence uh, more importantly we saw CMEs closed at 7935 yesterday and that was uh, on you know on a massive downtick so keep in mind for for myself the next trade that I'll likely do is just judging where CMEs are on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern East Standard Time, sorry, where spot is when CMEs open at 7 p.m. East Standard Time tomorrow night on Sunday. If we see spot trading above where CMEs close, I'll probably be a buyer. Um, if you know it, uh, uh, when we have gap fill uh, coming back down, and if uh, and, and if we're trading below, then I actually be a seller and probably be targeting a move down to uh, 7200. That would be a nice little setup there. But of course, need to see where spot is in relation to CMEs by 7 p.m. Eastern time to, uh, tomorrow night. That is when the trade that is when the trade idea becomes activated. Not for right now. For for right now, it's more just watching and whatnot. This is actually kind of a nastier close uh, down taking on. Friday typically don't want to see a close down on Friday um, but not a death sense like I mean this is not really this is hardly a close down I mean the day is green right but it is a rejection off the uh, red 10 symbols we spoke about yesterday as well so you know CMEs are, are quite clear and if we could see if, if if we could see when CMEs open back up actually taking out this 8250 ish region right here which it almost, which it, which it actually almost got up to uh, yesterday. Uh, then yes, I, I do believe that you're going to see Bitcoin pull Litecoin and uh, and work its way towards its 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 uh, its prior highs at this uh, 8850, 80 or maybe even 9000 ish region. And at that point, you know, you got it. You, you you know the the topic of conversation going back to 10,000 becomes very. Uh, very viable once again, but of course it's a little bit premature to be calling these sorts of things for right now I think it's important to be agnostic and in, 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 you know just trading within these confines uh, While Bitcoin's in a little bit of a uh, little bit of an interesting place right here Anyways, let's focus a little bit more on Bitcoin as uh, the spotlight's been shown on Litecoin the whole day We do see four hour stokes crossing the downside. We do see also a nice trend line actually forming all the way back from here uh, Sorry even further than that going all the way to uh, what is this? 
Yeah, uh, early May, so almost you know almost a month ago. This is a month long trend line, so uh, I do believe that we probably uh, uh, that uh, that we will respect this, and we will see we will see some down uh, here, uh, most likely. Um, where support's going to be? I mean, more preliminarily speaking, we already did see that move to uh, seventy eight fifty. There you go. All right. So I guess that's already happened. Uh, let's go through the lower time frames. I need to dissect this a little bit more before I before I start to get more confident on something like that. Uh, hourly looks like he wants some up. Hourly looks like he wants to take another another leg towards uh, eighty eighty. Uh, we do see hourly stokes, however, down right now. So, huh? I usually, don't like to trade against those guys. They've been they've actually they they've been a cheat code for this past like three months of trading they've, they've been so fucking good uh two hour two hour looks okay uh two hour looks okay two hour stokes coming down but we do see a nice trend line forming here now don't we and uh, that will likely be support and we're gonna be testing that in just a second let me just actually get rid of some of these trend lines we're getting too convoluted but we need to do we need to we, we, we need to do more thoroughness more thoroughness baby more thorough um like henry uh shit yeah three uh, three hour, yeah i'm not really getting too much from this let's look at the six hour for a second uh, again um a little bit of droopiness implied actually by some of these but i wouldn't be I, I don't think i don't think i'm comfortable making any calls here really i don't yeah i don't think i'm comfortable making making any calls uh maybe shorter term time frames do pop back down to about 78 90 but i would not i i it's not appropriate to get bearish here unless if you see Bitcoin breaking below 7,800 uh, for the lower time frames. And even then, remember the critical areas we spoke about. Whoops, uh -oh, my mouse just got super slow. Uh, the critical area as we spoke about for the last few days is that yes while uh, while it was leaning to the downside there was no reason to take a trade to the downside to actually break the white 200 simple or purple 200 x benchmark average on the four hour total time frame these are trend lines that have not or sorry uh moving averages that have not been broken since bitcoin really switched around its own behavior back here in uh early february you can see that bitcoin once it regained the four hour 200 simple especially i mean it, you know it comes back and tested a few times but that's been a buy every fucking time um, you do see that you know it's been a perfect buy for this past section right over here. So you know realistically, if you're trading the very low time frames, just understand that there's not all that much edge on these trades. I mean, I, I suppose it's viable, but there's not like too much. Maybe like a hundred bucks, maybe two hundred bucks at most. Um, it's I wouldn't really be looking for like major downside until this white two hundred simple breaks. Uh, it is coming up rather rapidly. It will be at 7,700 a share up on the next few ticks. And if that does break, then yes, I would be looking for a move down to the lower 7,000, 7,100 to 7,200 becomes extremely likely at that point in time. Um, so that would be like the next big downside trade that I would see. But for right now, I, uh, I I don't, you know, that's not the right thing to be doing until that until the area actually breaks. Of course, it's not finished vibes, not finished vibes. I'm just kind of sharing exactly how I'd be thinking in these exact sort of same situations. Of course, you know, you have to have to talk about the scenarios and, and the different responses as time goes on because, like I like I made that analogy before, you know, I, I've really been thinking about this a lot. It's 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 like learning any sort of sport, or, or for me, baseball. Uh, you always want to be asking yourself, if the ball gets hit to me, where do I throw it? You know, because there's an infinite amount of possibilities. Do you hit the cutoff man? Do you go to first, second, third, home, what, whatever it might be, or or you know. It's just, it's, there, there, there's a lot to be aware of, but over time, after you kind of think about all the possible scenarios, then, you know, it becomes second nature. And that's kind of what you want to get you with trading. Uh, all these all these areas should be marked out beforehand. And then once they get to them, well, it's time to make the response and there's no real thinking involved. And then you don't have to go through that massive internal battle, battle of, of battling your own personal psyche saying, oh shit, is this the right thing to be doing? Should I be doing this right here? It, oh my God, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just really convoluting and it's like, no shit, you're not going to make a good decision in that sort of mind frame. In that sort of a mind frame, you're using too much mental RAM for dumb shit. <laughs> and I and I and I can speak to, towards this uh, very deliberately because I've gone through it myself, and uh, and it's and that's one of the most helpful things for me. So, uh, you know, I used to write down like uh, you know all the pivots on my phone, um, you know, it, you know, in the notes section, or if you want to do it by pen and paper, that's that's all well and good too. It does help to get them out on uh, on pen and paper. Uh, just helps with with memory and learning in general from 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 what studies have shown. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know that's that's kind of the value of doing these videos, not just you know for, really for myself. I mean, I need to be aware of these for my own self, uh, even though right now I'm not necessarily like too gung ho about trading, just because I have to deal with uh, with some other fun stuff. Anyways, um, 
Let's check. Let's check out how the uh, how the medium time frames are doing. Uh, six hour, yeah, six hour. Really not getting too much from this. I am, you know, I'm I'm really split on the lower time frames. Uh, I, the only thing that would make me bullish is what Litecoin's doing. Uh, Bitcoin on the hourly does look like it wants to make another run towards eighty eighty. Um, but uh, you know, lower time frames until we actually break and close an hourly total above eighty one hundred. I don't really see any sort of changes in behavior here. Even then, uh, that's too close to that pivot of eighty two fifty as we've been speaking about this blue box territory right here, which I'm just going to adjust. Uh, so I, you know, I'd, I'd be kind of hands off. If you took the long yesterday and you made money on that, hey, you know, it's time. I, I, I think it's time to not be greedy. Uh, above here can be a little bit greedy to the upside, probably looking for a move at the very least to about 8,600, uh, but light, likely more so, li likely into the 8850-ish region and below the 200 simple at about 7,700, then fuck yeah, man. I, I'd be very greedy to the downside, uh, low 7,000s, and we'll, we'll rediscuss if and when it does get there. Remember though, 7,000, 7,200, a very massive area of interest. Going back on over here into the May 17th of CMEs, we do have a, we do have a nasty gap still within that region. Also the purple 200 exponential moon damage coming around that region as well. So. Uh, so I would be looking for a bounce in that region. Uh, so there would be two trades. There would be first a short below 7,700 down there, and then the bounce from there. So you know that's quite generous of Bitcoin, especially with these massive ranges and numbers that we get. Absolutely love it, man. Um, and, uh, and, and, and you know, of course, then from there we can reassess. But, uh, but for now, I don't think that this is the time. I, right, right as we're in the middle of these, of these regions, I think it's the time to be saving your, your trading capital for those bigger plays. Anyways, um, I do want to get back onto this chart and, uh, and, just, and just hash out that 7200-ish area even more. We do have, of course, the white twin and symbol coming in right around there. As we spoke about before with Mrs. Litecoin, she's been using that to rally off of and a very powerful uh, rally initiated off that indeed. Now, Bitcoin and Litecoin look nothing alike here, actually, as Litecoin's you know, approaching, approaching prior highs on the three-day. Uh, Bitcoin still kind of struggling and being held below the red, or not below, but uh, but around the red 10 simple. Uh, let's check out how our oscillators are doing. Yeah, three-day stokes are coming down. And uh, historically speaking, Bitcoin, when it does get them in this range for this long and then heads below the critical zone, these are some pretty nasty drops that have been called. So uh, again, I, I do err to the side of caution here. I think it's very appropriate to be caution and, uh, and conservative within this region. Can be aggressive below the pivots or uh, above or below the pivots that we spoke about. But in this region right here, the next big trade is staring us right in the face. Um, but it hasn't it hasn't revealed itself just yet. Uh, we do see three day uh, jewel uh, firing off a sell signal. Not a perfect one, but a decent one the other day. Or sorry, on the la you know on the last tick, which was like maybe I don't know three days ago. Um, but uh, we've already had some pretty, we've already had some pretty damn good, you know, momentum play out. That's a 16 and a half percent move. I mean, yeah, the jewel, you know, can can give you some massive moves, but 16, 16 and a half percent is, you know, it's nothing to nothing to discount. Um, and uh, and let's go over here to the two day. What do we? Well, sorry, I should mention on the three day on the three day RSI, we do have bearish divergence here as well. One, two, three, actually, and down uh, harkened to below that uh, that moving average. Um, actually, by the way, I'm in, I'm in Elsa's new place and it's like, there's like nothing in here. So I'm actually on the ground right now, like a fucking Indian. It's good. It's really good. Not like a, not like an Indian from India, but like an Indian from, from Native America. Like a Native American. <laughs> <laughs> two day chart right over here. Uh, a few a few things interested right here, just because uh, we do see two day breaking this trend line, the one that had been viable all the way from uh, middle of March, um, breaking down a little bit. Uh, I do expect a little bit of momentum actually to be gained down below here, but uh, keep in mind if we do see, if I mean looking at the two day time frame, you know, I would I would almost be comfortable to say that uh, if we do see even just taking out the high of the prior two day dildo, which just set last night. So that high is 81.34 and uh, 99 cents repeating. Um, then we're probably, we're probably gonna see that move into at the very least 8,600 and probably 88.50. Uh, this does look okay. I mean, it is getting, it did get reaccumulated on the two day 21 exponential moving average. Now, is it setting up for a head and shoulders? Maybe, you know, you, you know my thoughts on head and shoulders. They, they do work, like don't get me wrong, they do work, but uh, Eh, it's just one of those patterns that everyone, you know, everyone sees, and well, we'll 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 figure it out. It's not even in place just yet, and obviously the neckline would be right around about seventy four hundred. So it's 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 way far off as a discussion. It's way too way too early to call it as such uh, right now. Um, but yeah, you could also see that the two day two, uh, twenty minute expansion moon average uh, coming in right around about seventy four hundred and rising rapidly would 
you know, if, if, if that does give way, then we're going to have some problems down to the lower 6,000. So yeah, 7,000 is a ma is a major pivot, but again, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. Only if seven, only if about 7,100, 7,200 were to break, would I start to get, you know, would I start to look for a move down into the lower 6,000s um, for right now? Still too early to call something like that, and we do see pretty much all the moving averages uh, switch around into a bullish posture over here on this on on, uh, on the two day. We see the red ten simple above the yellow twenty one, above the green fifty, above the it's a cyan clo uh, crossing above today. I think it might just be no, it's ten dollars off from the two hundred. So yeah, we just have one more to go, but uh, it'll be in a full bullish posture relatively soon, uh, barring any sort of a major dump down to that level. But uh, I think even then it would be a little bit too uh, too fast. Let's go check out the weekly. Yeah, weekly over here um, looking significantly different than Litecoin. You know, Litecoin's weekly is likely going to close extremely well. I mean, this is Litecoin looks like she wants to drive to, you know, probably. I mean, 120, 125 is not much of a call, but uh, 145, 146 starting to look a little bit more likely for Mrs. Litecoin. Very, very good. Not only this, but look at but, but look at your weekly Stokes just straight up, just straight up and atoms. So we do see divergence in the market that is worth mentioning. Anyways, um, going back on over here to Mr. Bitcoin, Mr. Bitcoin hinting at his own cross to the downside on the weekly Stokes, which does make me a little bit apprehensive, uh, as we have literally been straight up since the beginning of February. And uh, weekly Stokes with my settings have been damn good at calling these downwards movements and, and upwards movements as well. Um, so if this one does cross down, which will be confirmed tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, do I look for a pullback on Bitcoin but Litecoin to go up higher? I, perhaps, perhaps maybe we see bifurcation. I mean, we've, we saw Litecoin lead the market up to the upside in the past and it, and it took weeks for Bitcoin to catch up. So that is a legitimate possibility. Um, we also do see, uh, what is it? We, we do see weekly jewel on Bitcoin uh, firing off a warning signal, but that's not a sell signal. That's nowhere near a sell signal, um, but it is a warning signal. It is saying not the time to be super aggressive. Um, and I do want to bring up the trolling bands as well. If we do close this next weekly trolling band below the top trolling band, which is currently coming at around 88.50, uh, which at this point, pretty likely, um, although crazier things have happened than you know an eight hundred dollar rally in the span of a day in Bitcoin land for sure, um, then yes, I would I would be looking at this from a troll under band perspective as likely to come down uh, to that lower seven thousand level. We will see this red ten simple rise up to about seventy two hundred. It's rising at about uh, four hundred to five hundred dollars. Sorry, uh, three hundred to four hundred dollars each and every week. It's currently it's currently around uh, sixty eight hundred. Sorry, sixty seven hundred. So it would be around about seventy one to seventy two hundred if it you know by tomorrow's next tick. Uh, so that would provide structural support right around that low 7,000 level. So not only would we have the three-day 200 some moon average at 7,200, but we'd also have the CME gap and this guy as well, all pointing around that direction. And also, and you could also say the two-day 21, I suppose. Um, but more importantly, you know, looking at all this stuff, uh, that would, you know, just just strengthen the opportunity, f in, you know, in my opinion, for a nice little bounce there. So again, trade ideas, you know, all across the board. Uh, but I think we're probably we probably won't see this like this week and we'll probably see it sometime next week uh, one of these guys populate unless if the bullish route takes us today that's probably the closest one to actually uh, transpiring funnily enough um, anyways uh, let's take this guy off and let's go on and check out Mr. Buterol. How's the good old Buterol doing over here at uh, 248 spot 54? And again, yeah, not looking not looking as strong as Litecoin. Litecoin Litecoin's a savior of the market right now. Um, but same thing on same same thing on Buterol as on Bitcoin. Uh, I do have a little bit of a difficult uh, I do have a difficult time getting bearish or bullish within this region. It's kind of it's in a complete no trade zone for me. Um, I would say though there is a quite there is quite an easy way to trade this one. If we do take out the higher the low of the prior of, of the prior daily doodle, you probably do have a good at the very least scalp trade. Uh, so that would be 250, let's just call it 254 to the upside and 244 and a half to the downside. If we take out 240, or sorry, 254 to the upside, I would be looking at a target. It's probably gonna come into confluence with whatever Bitcoin does back up to this region right around 260 and a half and probably beyond over time. And, and if we do break to the downside, which is also gonna be denoted by a four hour total close below 235, I would be looking much lower to about 210, maybe even 200 even, but but 210 being it, be a very, uh, very massive area of interest. Um, uh, but right here, it's it's grinding its way up. I you know, it's sloppy. A lot of these cryptos are sloppy as fuck, but uh, they're fighters. 
I mean, is this just flagging out? You could say that. You could certainly make the case for it now. You could certainly make the case for it now. Yeah, Bitcoin just took a little bit of a movie move up. Um, yeah, man, I, I, you know, I, yeah, it looks like, well, um, I'm gonna post this video and this move already basically happened. Uh, what we called it when it was like 79, 79.80, now it's going, well, now it's still got, still got 40 bucks, so maybe by the time I post it. Um, yeah, again, lower time frame is not where I'd, not where I'd wanna put my money right now, but uh, putting the puzzle piece together, if Litecoin's anything to go off of, we'd be getting bullish. Um, okay, cool, uh, back on Mr. Beatles, sorry, just all over the place today. Where did I put him? Where are you? Put him in the corner, there you are. Um, so yeah, daily da daily is quite cut and dry um, when it comes to that. And you know, if we did take out the top, this guy probably does march its way back up over time towards 270 to, to these prior highs. And it, you know, same thing here. Got the golden cross, the green, and the purple, and we are technically above the yellow 21 right now. Uh, doesn't look doesn't look as uh, confidence inducing as uh, Litecoin though. Uh, two day same sort of thing. Structure support right around 244 and a half, 245. Three day same sort of thing here too. Uh, so again, little the, uh, Mr. Buterell is not leaving right now. Mr. Buterell is following, and uh, I don't really think that he's as important to be watching. If I had to go off the four hour, though, mm, maybe I look for a little bit of a pullback here. Uh, shorter term time frames. Um, we already looked at Litecoin. Let's go check out Litecoin. Actually, just did, did Litecoin just make a new high? No, still still marching our way towards there, uh, but looking good. Uh, Litecoin looks like she wants to give another stab towards that area. Uh, let's go check out GBDC. How did GBDC close? Uh, big up for GBDC. Actually, really good close in the four hour. Uh, would say, yeah, there we go. Um, daily close right at the 10 simple, so it looks a lot like CMEs right now. Looks a lot like CMEs. People are gonna call us a head and shoulders, but it's still, you know, even if you're trading a head and shoulders, you gotta wait till that neckline. You don't have to do anything, but I'd wait until the neckline breaks at 9.15, and then we can talk about targets back down around here, which is gonna put Bitcoin, you know, at lower 6,000s, but for now, uh, it's not gonna be trading over the weekend, so not really too helpful, but uh, but pretty damn good close, to be fair. Um, we do see daily stuff getting quite far down there as well, so it uh, could be a setup. It uh, could actually be a nice little setup. Uh, Cardano. Again, tr struggling its way through, but I do think that ultimately probably does, probably has put in a low. Uh, you can see that we're kind of grinding the resistance of this triangle right here. So uh, the other day we came down and tested support. Nice. Test the resistance right over here. Well, if you go test resistance, typically we're going to go test some supports. Uh, but this thing is getting pretty damn mature, so this thing will break out relatively soon. Um, if it does break out to the upside, which I do believe that this one does break out to the upside versus Satoshi's, uh, I'd be looking at a target somewhere around 1250 to likely 1350 over time. Uh, and I do think that these things are putting in lows. Again, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Uh, but it's just the way that a lot of these cryptos operate, so I would say that uh, probably, you know, probably overall fine. Um, and uh, and trying to put in a, like a like a legitimate low there. Uh, BNB, what's BNB doing? Uh, one of the better actors as well. Yeah, daily looks okay. Really grinding this area out. And typically, that's going to be a good sign. Uh, four hour four hour looks constructive uh, uh, around here. I would be bullish on BNB as and this is actually a very easy trade right here. Perhaps the most actionable trade right now. Uh, not that this is financial advice. Just if I was trading this uh, piece of shit, then this is what I do. Um, then uh, you know, as long as you're above uh, thirty one and a quarter, I, I you know I play it long and I think it's fine. Um, and I do think that it has some upside here. Uh, maybe back up to about thirty three and a half. Uh, looking at weekly, weekly again, not not too confidence inducing, um, but lower time frames okay. Okay, for now, uh, Zcash, um, Zcash, good close on the two day. How about the daily? Yeah, you know, looking at the two day, I, I like this close. Um, probably, probably at some point does come back down and test eighty fifty, but that's that's probably going to be a buy uh, for me. Um, you know, if that happens, a little bit more medium term would probably be looking somewhere right around eighty seven and a half to you know basically your prior high at like 90, 90 ish plus. Uh, Bcash, what's Bcash doing? Let's go over here to the two day, see how he closed his. Um, being held below the 10 simple, so not the strongest one right now, although Bcash has lived in the past, uh, and actually below the yellow 21 as well. Uh, it's actually a little bit on the weaker side for Bcash, to be fair. Um, what do I say here? Uh, you know, again, certainly on the weaker side, relatively speaking, but is Bcash going to do something that the rest of the market is not? I mean, it's it's the same thing, right? If you break below, uh, two, uh, what is this, 384, then yeah, I'd be bearish on this for a move much, much lower. We're talking probably back down to about three 340 ish region. Uh, by the same token, if we see if we see if if we see even like an hourly little close above uh, 408, I'd be looking for a move back up to about four uh, 450 ish region. 
um, again, you know, the, 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 the time to be putting, you know, capital at risk is not, in my opinion, right now. These are some pretty nice trades staring us in the face. Uh, Tron. Tron, what, what are you doing, Tron? Uh, looks a little bit on the weaker side. But again, same thing here. If it can, if it can take out three spot, four, four, five to the upside, I'd be bullish for a move basically back to its prior highs. Let's look at the weekly for a second. Yeah, again, weekly looks fine to me. Weekly looks like it's bottomed out over a long period of time in this region. And uh, we put in a base right at this uh, three, uh, three spot one region. And uh, that base is to be bought for now. And, you know, again, looks uh, lower time frames. Lower time frames looks like they want to come back down here to be fair at like at 30 and a half cent, or sorry, three and a half cent. Uh, but I gave it the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, Neo. Neo, uh, same thing. Probably pro looks like he wants to work his way way back up to uh, thirteen bucks, thirteen and a quarter. EOS, um, EOS, yeah, not not really leading right here. Although it has been stronger, um, certainly has been stronger. Uh, again, it, uh, I'm I'm kind of struggling with this one. I don't have a strong opinion. I have a strong opinion on Litecoin. I have a strong opinion on some of the other ones, and, and in some ways, Bitcoin for for those pivots. But uh, this, not so much. Probably going to follow whatever the majors do. So strength in Litecoin benefits something like this most likely. Uh, upside resistances would be seven dollars and three cents from what I look at. Uh, if we, it, I, I would feel strong about this. If we do break below six and a quarter, then yes, I would be looking for some significant downside into the uh, mid fives. But for right now, you know, again, not you know, not the one flashing obvious signals. Uh, XRP, ooh, XRP, a little bit of a, ooh, I don't like this actually right there. Um, to be fair, but same thing on the weekly. You know, weekly's, oh, I, it looks ugly as fuck, but it's okay. <laughs> I can't believe I say that. It's like, it looks, it looks okay. It's, ugly, it's also ugly as fuck, kind of. Um, you know, shorter term, do I think that we come back down to like maybe 41 cent? Probably. Uh, but this is like really short term. We're talking about like, you know, trading the fucking crack tra trader time frames. Um, four, yeah, four hour does look like it wants to come back down uh, 40 and a half cent, maybe even grind out this 39 cent region. Uh, but I wouldn't get I, I wouldn't get bearish for like a legitimate move down until we actually break 39 cent region. It's the same thing on the four hour. It's just that 200 simple and 200 exponential running all these guys up. Again, they're getting bought up off of, so I wouldn't, it's, there, there's no real reason to short like for a major downside trade until, any, until that breaks on any coin, really. Uh, Monero, Monero wants to come down to the four hour, probably, probably pop back down to uh, 84 spot 75. Um, same thing there. Man, yeah, same, same, pretty much the same chart. Uh, Stellar, Stellar actually had an okay close on the daily, but uh, four hour looks like it wants to come down as well. Test C 200 again, so we'd be looking for a trade back down around there uh, if you're on the very low time frames. But again, higher time frames, I'd be paying attention to the other majors. Uh, Litecoin, ooh, uh oh. Are we seeing a rejection right here? I mean, it's hard to be, I mean, yeah, we're gonna see some down, we're gonna see some down here. Um, but I do think that this area probably does get bought uh, daily. Sorry, maybe let's go to a 12 hour for this. Yeah, if the 12 hour does pop back down to the 21, I'd say that that is uh, probably okay. Yeah, anywhere around 111 to 112. So yeah, maybe we actually, it looks like we actually do get that. Um, anyways, back on Mr. Bitcoin over here. Ooh, nice, nice down for Bitcoin. There you go. All right, so Bitcoin, we got, we got that slight move up to about, Let's see. So I said 80, 80. We got up to 80, 30. Eh, whatever. Uh, yeah, coming back down now. Let's see. Again, uh, I do think that Bitcoin is kind of is it setting up for a test of uh, of 77 again. I don't. I think it's too early to say that. Now let's actually go to BitMexico over here. Um, it is a little bit too early to say for that. But uh, again, I don't feel confident on these lower time frames, man. If it has to say something on the hourly, I would say I would say down. We got hourly and four hour stokes both turning at the same time. That's usually not a good recipe uh, for lower time frames. You usually want to see those two line usually when those two line up, it's it's a decent trade. Um, again, I, I can't get bearish until we actually break a four hour total below the two hundred simple here. Uh, seventy about seventy seven hundred. We can do that, then yes, I'm targeting to move much lower towards uh, seventy seven. Or sorry, not 77, Jesus Christ, uh, 70, 71 to seventy two hundred. Um, but for right now, I think uh, I think it's a time to be a little bit more a little bit more reserved.
does look like there is some downside here on the lower time frame. So, anyways, with all that said, uh, and like and like I said, to the upside, the same sort of pivot point would be this blue box territory right around eighty two fifty above there. Yes, I do think that we work our way, you know, another three hundred four hundred dollars higher. So a nice little trade to be made there too. And then probably at that point, you know, you just get you just get bullish overall. Uh, but like I said, on the higher time frames for Bitcoin, I think there's just, I think there are a lot of things suggesting that uh, suggesting that it's time to be cautious and looking for an overall pullback. Uh, again, when you go up, when you go up literally uh, four four months straight to the upside, you know you're probably gonna have a little bit of pullback, and it's completely healthy. Um, so I would imagine that uh, over the next few weeks, we probably do see some of that, some more, you know, some some healthy correction. Anyways, with all that said, uh, I do want to wish you well on this uh, lovely little Saturday morning. I'm gonna go eat a shit ton of food because I am extremely hungry, and uh, hopefully get off this floor because it's very difficult on my back. <laughs> uh, did some deadlifts yesterday, so. It's been uh, it's it's been a long night. Anyways, uh, take care. See you soon. And and also want to remind you that the programs still I'll, I'll keep the sale open for the rest of the weekend. Uh, again, I do apologize for all the people um, who I you know who I've been a little bit uh, slow with getting back to. Uh, again, it is not my intention to be slow. It's just you know, and I and I know that you're probably excited as well. At you know, as am I. Don't get me wrong. It's just you know, it's it's it's, it's been difficult getting around everything. So I'm doing my best um, to get around everything. So I'll keep that open for the rest of the weekend, uh, and and hopefully I answered a bunch of questions with that, so that there's uh, so there's no you know surprise or anything like that. Anyways, um, take care. See you soon, and have a great Saturday.